On today's episode, we put together the VVT engine. Last episode was the port and polish that you so craftily were able to accomplish. Um, it was definitely not just a couple minutes. No, no, it took, it took longer than I expected. The <laughs> casting was way worse, but it's done now. But it's done now, way. and after you completed that port and polish job, we took it to a local machine shop. What did we have done to this, to this head? So, took it to the machine shop to have just pretty much the head refreshed is the main thing. Uh, okay. It looked pretty tired when we took it apart. So. It was it was pretty gnarly in there, I will say. Yeah, it was gross. <laughs> uh, but, you know, everybody's favorite. While you're in there, we took off 40 thousandths uh, to the 40 thousandths head shave. Uh, so that'll bump your compression up from 10 to 1 to 11 okay. to 1. Gotcha. Uh, and so now will be interference. Yes, it will be interference now. Okay. But with a 40 thousandths head shave, you're still, you can use stock cam gears, uh, it, the motor will take it. A stock ECU would take it, really, if you wanted to. But it's so it's it's plug and play. It is a plug and play solution. It's not. Yes. It's very easily really opening. Yeah. Yeah. We're not opening up a, a huge situation that we have to go in and fix now. It's it's plug and play at that point. Right. So. And then we we're looking into what a, a five angle valve job, but yeah. so there's what was the situation there's a five there? angle, three angle, and then just a regular valve job. Okay. Um, we ended up just going with a regular valve job. The machine shop told us that there was no. No real way you could actually do a five angle. There's not enough space on the Miata head, so we just went it's ahead. A, it's a small engine. Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? So Who we knew? went ahead with a regular valve job, uh, and uh, it's back now. So yeah, it's uh, back. It looks really pretty now uh, to match the port and polish job that you did, and uh, we're going to continue moving on and uh, as assemble the engine. So, the valve shimming. We went through after we got the head back and started really putting everything together, a big part of the engine assembly was reshimming the valves. And kind of take us through what that process is like a little bit. Okay, so on an NB motor, uh, they took away the hydraulic lifters and replaced them with solid. Uh, they're better for various reasons. They're harder to set up, but better in the long term. Uh, so, there's these little discs on top of each valve. Uh, and since we slapped the valves in and did a whole valve job, the valves are technically shorter, and you got to reset or at least verify that all of your valves are the right clearance in between the uh, the cam and the valve. So uh, we had to replace all of them. All of them. All of them. They were all bad. Yeah, so, <laughs> and uh, that was really a result of 
you were saying of the uh, the valve job itself. Yeah, so the machine job must have taken enough off to get a good seal. That, okay. Uh, that the valves were off by several thousands. Uh, so. Gotcha. So yeah, we had to order those little discs, the shims, yep. for each one. And now this is a tip for everybody: measure them when they arrive. Because I, of all people, Stefan's really the detail-oriented one of the two of us. But I'm like, hey, let's, let's just verify. Let's make sure that we got all the right sizes. And we did not. We got one that was the wrong size. One may have been mismeasured. But one was the wrong size. We're going to talk our, about that one. We're going to talk about the other one. This whole process and redoing these shims and stuff, uh, I'm sure everyone who's watching this video has seen Car Fashion Channel and Miata Dad. He's done the video on it. We're going to put that link in the description. He does a great job explaining the whole process. I couldn't have done it without that video. So. No, it was, it was really, yeah. it was really thorough. Um, what we also have in the description is a spreadsheet that you developed. So it has the whole uh, you know, intake and exhaust drivetrain side, and you can put in your measurements, and it will automatically spit out you know, what, what valves size you, you need. need. Yeah. And uh, I, I took the spreadsheet of sizes from Toyota and put them into that spreadsheet. So doesn't automatically pull them, but they're all there with part numbers. So yeah, yeah, and in Greg's video, you find out that there's you know Mazda shims, Toyota shims, and I think was it there was a third company I as well. Third companies, but yeah, there's other companies that have the same size shims that you can pull from with different thicknesses, and I think we ended up with all Toyota. Yeah, just shims. just went Toyota was easier. Yeah, order from one site. Yeah, so um, order from the same place that Greg did. Got one bad one, so beyond that, but. Again, you know, our goals here with the series, with really the engine in general, is something that can be made by anybody at home. You know, these are the steps. you got to do X, Y, and Z. After you do the valve job, you've got to go through, make sure, verify that all this stuff's working properly. It's not very difficult, and, yeah, this is what the series is really helping you go through. Yeah, it's just time consuming. But, yeah, we're, I mean, we are literally in my garage with... Yeah. With my own tools. There's, there's nothing crazy going on here. You can do this at home. That's... Here it is. It's a thing. It's together and looking pretty. Uh, Stefan, you've uh, gone above and beyond uh, painting this thing. And uh, we did a wrinkled black on the top that, of course, I did. And you know I did it because it's messed up. Um, <laughs> it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I think. It'll look fine once it's in the car. Once it's in the car, you won't notice it as much. It's just we had to do some touch-ups around the lettering. I'd done such a perfect job with the wrinkle black, and then I went in and tried to do the detail work, and and it just didn't uh, didn't come together as easily as as it as the rest of it. But it's together now, and it looks great. And um, yeah, you've done this kind of paint scheme before. Tell us, like, what's what's your thinking process behind it? It looks awesome. It looks very sharp. So it's just, you know, it's not really a paint scheme on its own. It's just the colors that come with the motor when you buy it, right? It's, you know, cast block, aluminum head, aluminum pan. So it's already silver, black, silver. And I think it looks pretty good on, on its own. So I figured just bring out that color contrast. Yeah. And, uh, paint it what it originally came yeah. with. You're not fighting, re trying to color something. Right, you're not painting something a different color. And you got to, oh, I missed a spot here and there. If you miss a spot on the black, you're not going to see it. So, yeah. Pretty easy way to cover it. Uh, I think it looks nice and clean and simple. And also, you know, you've already done all this work. Why not make it look nice before you throw it in the motor or, or do the engine right. bay? Uh, do it. Do it once. Do it right. I mean, you even went through and got hardware. But all new hardware on this engine. Everything back together. It's crazy. So. I, I almost feel bad using it, but I, I'm not gonna feel I'm gonna bad. Make using you use it. it. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna feel bad using it. But uh, no, it, it turned out great. Yeah. So we are done, well, not all the way. We're done for the winter on uh -huh. this project. Yep. Um, we're at Stefan's house this whole time, and this is his garage, his girlfriend, you, fiance. Fiance. Fiance, sorry, Felicia. Uses, you know, that half of the garage. His car is here, so we are not going to be doing anything with this for a little while. We're going to wrap the engine up, we're going to put it in the corner, and we're going to put this project on pause for what a couple months until the salt clears and we get my car over here hopefully sooner than later hopefully sooner than later um and yeah in the meantime we've got another awesome project for you but before we get into that really what we're doing here with this project i wanted to summarize this this is fully optimizing a bp vvt engine 
And that's, that's the goal. I, we're not trying to do anything too crazy. Anyone can do this at home in any garage, really. But there's not a lot of information out there for a VVT engine, fully optimized, relatively basic build. You know, and everyone just assumes they go turbo or it's just some sort of force induction turbo supercharger or engine swap. And we want to know if is this a waste of time? <laughs> We're trying to find that out for us. You know, if it's a, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be fun. Oh yeah, it's, it's a Miata. Regardless. It's yeah. it's going to be fun. It's not like I'm just burning my money. But really, how much horsepower? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> my bank account might might have uh, another opinion about that. <laughs> Not about money. It's about sending a message. We're really trying to figure out how much horsepower this is and sharing it with everybody. What is our experience with it? What's the budget? We're gonna do a cost breakdown once we get this in the uh, car, the engine uh, in the car. I'll go through step by step with how much money it costs, everything that you need for it, and really break it all down. And once we get to the dyno, I think we'll have a really solid answer. Yeah, have a nice uh, before and after. And just go from there. But, uh, but yeah, in the meantime, this is going to bed. Our next video will be introing your project, which is... More of a money pit. Really exciting. <laughs> and, that too. Poten and, and not potentially, it is a little more of a money pit. But um, it's going to be awesome. And it has something to do with uh, that right there. So stay tuned for the next video here on Nap Motorsports. It's a YouTube page. This is a thing. We're getting started here. Subscribe and uh, come along for the journey. <laughs> okay, cool. This is, oh, this is a great angle, yeah.